He is the Oscar and Golden Globe award-winning actor whose new book is called Green Lights, Matthew McConaughey. Hey. How you doing, Bill? Good to see you. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Thank you for doing this. Uh, your book is fascinating. Uh, I tell you, for a guy who for so long was known as, you know, a beach bum who didn't own a shirt, you're a very deep guy. You really are. So why don't you just start off by telling people what that title means? Because I think it's Green so lights. important to the book. Yeah, so I've been keeping a diary for 36 years. And uh, I finally got the courage to take those diaries away to go see what they were. What I found in 36 years of writings were stories, people, places, prescribes, poems, prayers, and a whole lot of bumper stickers. Then I looked at those and I found this central theme of green lights. I found that I'd caught green lights in my life. The green lights are things that we, we like. They give us freedom. They say go. They affirm our way. I found that I'd created a lot of those in my life by choices I made. I found that in a lot of ways they were thrown in my lap and I got very fortunate and lucky and did good things with them. I also found that a lot of the yellow and red lights in my life, crises, hardships, death of my father, years abroad where I was lost, had green light assets in them that revealed themselves later in life. Now, when we realize that there's a green light asset in a red or yellow light in our life is sort of relative. Sometimes we notice it in the moment. Sometimes we notice it next week. Next week, sometimes we notice it on our deathbed. But I do believe that eventually in the rearview mirror life, all the green, all the yellow and red lights do eventually turn green. Well, wow. <laughs> boy, you got that down. Um... Yeah, and I mean, so much of the book, honestly, it, 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 you remember that old Dos Equis, maybe it's still on, commercial, The Most Interesting Man in the World? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> so many of the passages are like copy for the next most interesting man in the world. He, he smoked peyote in Mexico in a cage with a mountain lion. Yes. You, you did that. You were blackmailed into having sex at 15. How, how does that even happen? Yes. I would have been the blackmailer at 15. <laughs> <laughs> You want to tell well, that story? As, <laughs> as, I, as, I wrote, as I wrote in the book, and I didn't give a whole lot of details on that, you know, I was raised thinking I wasn't going to lose my virginity until I was married, and, and at least if I did, it was going to be with someone that I had a really good relationship with. Well, uh, neither of those happened. Um, uh, this girl was much older. And as I write in the book, I said, I was very sure at the time that I was going to hell for the act. And now I, I merely hope that that is not the case. Uh, I'm merely <laughs> sure that I hope that's not the case. <laughs> yes, you're quite, you are a philosopher. That's, that's the interesting part. And, and you did something in your career that is very rare, which is you changed the perception of yourself. That's the hardest thing to do in show business. You know, when you get a label on yeah. you, it sticks. And you manage to find a way to not be the beach bum with the shirt off, you know, to be this guy. You want to tell the kids yeah, was... how to do that? Well, what happened was I was the rom-com guy. I was the shirtless guy on the beach. Um, that was fine. Yes, I said it then and I'll say it now. Those rom-coms I was doing were paying the rent for the houses on the beach where I was shirtless. Guilty. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so I never, yeah. you know, pallyhooed that, that part. But I did notice that that's all that I was in the public eye, and that's all I was to studio finances in Hollywood. Other roles I wanted to do, dramatic roles, they were not being offered. They were not an option for me. So at a time where I said, I, if I can't do what I want to do, I'm going to stop doing what I've been doing, it was a scary proposition. Um, so I checked with my wife, uh, checked with my money manager and agent and said, I'm going to stop doing rom-coms. Well, guess what? Um, okay. That's all that came in for six months. I got a $14.5 million offer for one, and that was harder to say no to because <laughs> I got a little relative on that going, really? You're going to say no to this? Which I finally did. And then for 14 months after that, nothing came in. Called my agent. He goes, no, no one's even mentioned your name. So a 20-month sabbatical. Um, after 20 months of, of a sabbatical from Hollywood, being gone, not seeing me shirtless on the beach, not seeing me in your living room or in a theater in a rom-com, I became a new good idea. Where's McConaughey been? He, we, we forgot about him. Well, guess who's a good idea now for Lincoln Lawyer, Killer Joe, Paperboy, Mud, True Detective, Dallas Buyers Club, Magic Mike. Right. And I just... Uh, so that, that movie, uh, that one you turned down for 14.5, uh, what yeah. was it and who did it? I'm not telling, and it didn't get, it didn't get made. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So the, the other reason I think you were able to do it is you just have uh, 
an innate likability, which is rare, but you know, usually carries the day. It's interesting, you talk about your big breakthrough, Time to Kill, the other guy who was up for it was uh, the other actor, I think, in your generation, who has, the only one who has the same amount of likability, which is our friend uh, Woody My Howard. brother from another mother? Woody? Brother from another mother. Well, you know, you're both sons of Texas. You have this yeah. weird family history, which I'll get into in a minute, but um, <laughs> you sure he's not your real brother? It's still debatable. We're, we're still finding out. My mom's got a story that makes us both think, we just might be related. 